Hi everyone, Zach here, and welcome to Lesson 7 in this series on developing a survival game. In this video, we'll set up our hunger system. Our hunger system will connect directly to our stamina and our health systems. That said, this series has been brought to you by Patreon sponsors like Random Number Generator. And all of that said, fire up your project and let's make a start. Hi everyone and welcome back to the editor. And in today's video, we're gonna work on our stamina, sorry, our hunger system, which oddly enough, despite my misspeak, misspeaking twice there now, we will be tying into our stamina system. So let's go to our survival game, our core, our character, and open up our BP first person character. And in here, we're gonna create a new custom, no, actually, hang on. We're gonna do this a bit differently than we did last time. We're gonna create some new variables. I don't know why I opened stats. We're gonna create a new character hunger variable. Now, hunger, I don't know why I compiled that when I didn't make it afloat yet. Hunger is going to be the reverse of what we actually mean here. So when the character has a lower hunger value, the more hungry they are. If you're having a hard time wrapping your head around that, remember what I said about thinking about pluses and minuses for polymorphic functions for stamina and health. Um, and we're not even being polymorphic here. So the higher the value, the less hungry. And I'm just gonna make a comment on this in our system. So tooltip, higher value equals less hungry, stroke lower value equals more hungry, or starving. All right, I'm going to default this up to 100. I am then going to not put a max. So this one will actually not have a max. We will either either be zero or 100. We, unless you wanna create a way for your character's stomach to get smaller or bigger, I, I just am gonna leave this at 100. Um, what we'll do is some foods might change how long we pause our hunger timers for. We'll talk more about that in, in a moment. So we are going to then, just in terms of how we wanna do this, we're gonna create three custom events. We're actually gonna have four, but we won't put the other one in until the next section when we have equipment, and sorry, inventory, and some of our inventory will be foodstuffs. We'll do a custom event for hunger check. From our hunger check, what we're going to do is we're gonna check if the character is starving. So we're gonna have a branch. And remember, starving, I said, is if it's equal to zero. Actually, we're gonna make it less than anything less than one. So I'm just gonna quickly put this in a category before I forget of stats, hunger. Remember, use the uninterrupted, uninterrupted vertical bar to get your subcategory. So I'm gonna get my get hunger. I am going to do is less than or equal to, and then I'm gonna set this to one. So if it's less than or equal to one, they are starving. I'm gonna take these two nodes, I'm gonna right click them, and I'm gonna to collapse to function. This function will be check if starving. It is a pure function. It will go into our stats hunger category. So if the character is starving, we are going to run a custom event. This is the second of the three we're doing. And this is our starving event. And we've actually written all the things we need to for our starving event, oddly enough. So I'm just gonna call the starving event. And what we'll do is we'll deplete stamina. So this is one of the ways we're tying it into our stamina system. So let's open up our stats stamina under our functions. And we'll do stamina deplete and we'll deplete at a rate of 0.5, and we will damage the character as well. Now you might wanna add in another step. Maybe you only want them to be damaged if their stamina is less than, uh, if it's zero, and you put the check in there with a branch. I'm gonna do both at once, and we're gonna damage them for a, a value of one. So pretty much the way the system's gonna work until we get to later sections is that for every second they don't eat, they're gonna take one damage, which at 100% max health going down is 100 seconds to find food. It's a bit mean, but hey, we'll fix those numbers later on and we'll talk about gameplay balance 
as we get our systems all in place. It's hard to balance something when you don't have the systems. That said, I actually already worked out what the numbers should be because, yeah. Um, and no, these aren't the actual numbers. These are the test numbers. What we're going to do on the true is we are going to decrease hunger. So like our stamina check up here running on a timer, this is going to run on a timer. So we're going to decrease our hunger. So I'm just going to create a event or a function. Yeah, function called decrease hunger. I thought it said methods there for a second. And we'll put that under stats, hunger. We'll get our character hunger. We will set it. We will subtract float from float to make this value. We will take our character hunger. We will subtract from it. Because again, remember, lower the number, the greater the hunger actually is. So decrease is inverse of what our actual value is. I probably have edited out the pause in my speaking there. By the way, I'm just renaming the B value. Names don't matter, it's just a reminder of what we're putting in there. I've decreased the, I paused and I probably edited out that pause because uh, I had to think about it for a moment. So if this is hard for you to wrap your head around in terms of the naming convention, yeah, yeah, I feel you. So remember, decrease hunger means we're actually making the character more hungry. What we're decreasing is the hunger stat, not the actual hunger. And I'm going to make a variable called hunger reduction. And being just uber lazy, it's going to be one. I'm going to say I'm being uber lazy by making it one because I'm just going to pull off of here. Promote to variable and this will be hunger reduction. All right, we're going to plug that into there. And there we go. We're just going to put this into the correct category of hunger, compile to make sure that actually is one. The other thing we need to do, we have to create the fourth event, the one will be in the next section. We still need to create the functions for because technically we, we need them. So we're going to create a, and this actually isn't for anything outside of we should have one of these, a get hunger function. This actually was supposed to be the second function I created, but I kind of skipped past it. That's why I paused at some point. Again, probably edit that pause out. And I'm just going to get my character hunger like I normally do when I'm being lazy and making these functions. Not making these functions is actually lazy. I'm doing it the work smart, not hard way. So I just plug into there and it auto fills in the fact that I need a float and gives it a name. We also have a decrease hunger, which again is making the character hungrier. We probably want a another one. I'm, because that naming convention is already so problematic, I'm just going to call it set hunger. And in our set hunger, we're actually going to have an increase value. So we're making the character less hungry. <laughs> Again, yikes on the naming convention. Oh, that's the wrong value. I want to get my character hunger. I want to set it. And I'm going to do float plus float. Because again, when we increase the hunger statistic, we are decreasing the actual hunger level. That is such a weird thing to say. And we're going to name that input increase amount, as I said already once in this video. The name doesn't really matter. I am going to go directly into that pin there, put a reroute in just to make this a little bit nicer and neater. And we'll take the character hunger, plug it into there, and there we go. You know, I am looking at my prep file, and I actually never, you know what we're going to do? is we're going to check, is this at 100 or not? Because if it is, then we want to stop increasing our hunger, don't we? At least I think we do. I, I would, or stop decreasing. So in our set hunger, instead of what I just did, and I probably am going to find a way to edit that out, or maybe not, we are going to do a clamp. We're going to clamp this value, so clamp float, between a value of 0 and 100. And I'm going to copy this clamp with a control C in just a moment so that the value never goes above or below that. We could use a clamp and some of the other things we've done. Hint, hint, hint. I'm not sure if I'm being obvious enough here. All right, plug that into there and I put our return node into here. All right, next we need to do an event for when our character is just eaten. And we are going to call this a custom event of just eight. Now, we can't make this event yet. So, and I mean, we can't make it because we don't have our timers. This is going to affect our timer. We're going to go up here. 
to where we created our first timer on the event begin play. And all we're gonna do here is create a timer that starts our hunger check. So I could just copy this node, which I'm going to do. It is going to be looping. I'm going to create event. The event I am going to create is our check. I can't type there, I keep doing that every time. Uh, we're gonna do our hunger check anyway. It's not check hunger, it's hunger check. And we're gonna create a timer for this that will loop every second. I'm not sure if you caught me saying earlier on it's gonna take us, it's looping a second. And again, we will change these values down the road, but this is what we're using for now. This is the hunger timer. This is also part of why we're creating those variables is I know that we're gonna to wanna to change this. So we'll go into our stats hunger folder. And then we're gonna, because we can actually pause this timer, we're gonna create a timer handle. So pull off the return value here, promote to variable, hunger th for timer handle. Take these sets of node for our set timer and the timer handle, collapse to function set timers. Open up your set timers, just put a return node in and line things up so it's a bit easier to read. There we go. All right, back in our event graph. Now what we can do, also let's just move this into our stats hunger, is we can now change those timers based on our characters having eaten or not eaten. And we're gonna run into a little bit of an issue. And I'm gonna intentionally cause that issue to show up by the way. Don't worry, it's not anything major. Just want you to be aware of something. We're gonna take this timer handle, we're gonna get it. We are going to pause the timer handle. All right, so now that we've paused the timer handle, we need to be able to unpause it, but we don't wanna unpause it right away. We want to have a bit of a delay. So we're gonna do a re-triggerable delay. So what's the difference between a re-triggerable delay and a delay node? Well, if you wanna be easy about this, you can just mouse over and read the information. But basically, what happens here on a delay? This fires once, pauses the timer handle, sets the delay. We'll have the unpause over here, by the way. After the timer hand, sorry, let's say we eat again, this gets fired again, we go through here, the delay's already activated. So let's say it's five seconds. We eat, it's now four, it's now three, we eat again, pull them through here, this is still three seconds, it's two seconds, we eat again, it's still two seconds when we get here, one second, and then we unpause. Whereas with this, what happens is that we come in, it goes, oh, pause me for five seconds or delay for five seconds, four seconds, three seconds, we eat again, it hits here, it resets it to five seconds. Now let's say it's at one second, it resets it again if we keep reactivating this. So that gives our, our hunger system a little bit more dynamic of a feel in terms of, you know, suddenly you, if you're eating a lot, you don't suddenly start getting hungry after eating the last little bit again. After the delay, we are gonna unpause our timer handle. And I'm gonna again create a variable here. And this will be our hunger pause uh, time. Hunger time pause, actually, sorry about that. And it will go directly into our stats hunger. And for now, we're just gonna put a dummy value in of five seconds. We will, when we get to the balancing part of the series, actually make that a dynamic value. So now the, the thing I was gonna show you, I'm just gonna move this over here because I don't want that to be part of this um, setup, is that I can't class this to a function. You always will get that error. You can't put anything with a timer in a function for some reason in Blueprint. You can do it in um, NC++. We're gonna instead make a macro. So what's the difference between a macro and a function? The example I once read when I started out working with Unreal was that a macro and a function do the same thing. They just go about it in different ways. So let's say our goal is to produce 10 cars. A function is one factory that produces 10 cars, one at a time. A macro is 10 factories that produces 10 cars. Sorry, let me try that sentence again. A macro is 10 factories that each produce one car. 
So they do the same thing, they just go about it in different ways. This function or macro, sorry, will be pause hunger timer. And now that we've done that, we can tuck that under there. And that, ooh, ooh, nope, nope, we're not done. We have this thing that I mentioned about our hunger system. We have this check if starving thing. If we're starving, we do not want to regain stamina. And actually, I'm just gonna double check something here. This is not well named. This is actually B is not starving. So if we are greater than one, then we're not starving. So if this is not starving, we can regain stamina. If we are starving, then we're not gonna regain stamina. If we're not starving, then we're gonna decrease hunger. If we are starving, we are going to increase hunger. Sorry if that wasn't clear early on because I didn't catch, I didn't name it. But that sets us through our hunger system. If you want to be really uh, fun with this, what we can do is take these nodes, paste them there. We're going to just break these for now. And uh, we'll plug in our character hunger. If I can find where the character is, it's right there. So when I hit play now, we can see every second my hunger is decreasing, 96, 95, 94. But that takes us through setting up our hunger system and setting it up with regards to our stamina system as well. That said, if you've enjoyed working on this section, if you enjoyed working on your hunger system, please hit the like button down below. In the next video, we'll be working on our UMG so we can get rid of these timers, which means we will be using interfaces to make a good encapsulated system. Don't worry if that sounds scary. I'll work, walk you through and explain what interfaces are. But if you want to be here for those tutorials, make sure to hit the subscribe and you know the joke I'm going to make. Follow the mannequin eyes down to that subscribe bell as well. If you don't hit the bell, YouTube might not notify you. Let's see if I can beat this timer. Um, and if you want a copy of this project file, make sure, not make sure, consider becoming a Patreon supporter. I am really paranoid about the timer now that I've given myself this challenge. Patreon supporters at upper tiers will get instant access to project files for any YouTube project, ongoing or otherwise. At other tiers, supporters get access to projects as they complete on YouTube. This series has been brought to you by Patreon supporters like Haynes, Quad Menson, and Rian. That said, I look forward to seeing you in the next tutorial, and I beat the timer, so I hope that you have a wonderful day. Also, I'm editing this in because I didn't pause the recording yet, but um, I was tempted to really keep going and see if I can uh, cover the nine seconds on the wonderful, but I was trying not to laugh the entire time I was doing that outro. Anyway, I do hope you have a wonderful day.